Welcome. Uh, I am in Mexico. So, I want to see if the Wi-Fi works here, and how it sounds, and all that jazz. So, I've managed to find a Dr. Pepper. One store out of... I think I've went through at least a dozen stores locally that I've been in now, and one very locally has it. Another one at this the entry to the town kind of had it. And then the the one at the big city by the airport also had it. But... Needless to say, the Dr. Pepper supply is secured. At least a few of them are for me. So how's everybody doing? I just kind of wanted to say, hey, show you guys this crazy place we're staying in. So we're, we obviously it's not very expensive because uh, what is it? 80. Uh, so it's like um, pesos right now i think it's 17 to 1 or something like that two dollars uh so we got a little golf cart because there's a group of us there's six others uh all my wife's longtime friends are here and uh yeah so i wanted to just show you guys this place and then we'll get up to the eagle's nest and uh i'll show you guys from there but so here is like the first of five floors if you count this as one floor and this other one where the kitchen is there's two kitchens so one kitchens up there and then we've got a patio out here under this thatch roof we don't have heated water um, and we don't have you can't flush anything down the toilet that's <laughs> uh, not liquid essentially uh, we do have a pool, which is pretty sweet. Uh, I don't know how safe the pool is. It's salt water. And then we've got all these geckos and all these like philodendrons and like strangler figs and monsteras and all sorts of stuff all around here. So then let's go, we'll go through here. And there's cockroaches at the, the little, um, that there's little geckos eating and stuff. Let me know if you guys can hear me okay i know it's a little dark right now we're going to be going up into the light in just one sec so this whole little patio area here let's turn this around so that's the pool area patio first floor second floor which we've come up on to now and then there's because of where we're at because the cartels kind of rule everything We've got this big guarded, like, 12-foot gate and spikes all around everything. And so then what we were just looking in from down there, this is the first floor, the bathroom here. Everything's super quirky and beautiful. Like, uh, even the toilet is, like, hand-painted. Uh, so, yeah, there's little geckos. We found two this morning uh, that were getting jiggy with it, and uh, we bought some donuts in the city and uh, brought them back. And apparently, they uh, they got one got in there, and then another decided to get in there. But for instance, anyways, there's apparently two in there. Also, a little girl sold my wife's friend this. Uh, iguana turtle stegosaurus monster uh, so there's that <laughs> it's cute um, I'm going to close this door night Liesl thank you and then so check this out so they have a whole separate wing that um, that like is hold on their door all these doors are like they lock, but they're kind of funky the way they lock. Like, you have to twist them a, a several different ways. <clears throat> there we go. Oh, I don't know. They'll figure it out. Okay, so then this light here, which just got turned out, uh, is the entryway. And it's a domed ceiling, which is pretty cool. And this circular entryway. And then... We come into a second apartment, but it's connected by a sky bridge on, like, the fourth floor. 
third floor, fourth floor, depends on how you look at it. So then you come in here, my wife and I are staying on this side, and um, the craftsmanship in here is just awesome. Like, there's all these little alcoves and sketchy wiring. <laughs> um, but then this is like a big round room, like a big round tower. And I never checked. Oh, it's just a, like a closet, it looks like. Yeah. Okay. So then there's this uh, three or four story spiral staircase. It's just wait till we get to the top. Like, it's a process. All right. So then we go up here. And there's all these windows looking out the town. And uh, here is our room. The weird part, you can't put the toilet paper down the drain at all. So it's kind of like the situation we left at home. I mean, but <clears throat> we've got a cool room that looks out on the courtyard. And then if we keep going up, more spiral stairs. And I don't know, like these are all tile, and it's hard on my back, so pardon my limping, crawling up this. Just wait till we get to the shady part. This part's actually not shady. All right, so then we get to this floor, and this is like where it's at. This is beautiful. There's no windows or anything here. This is all uh, open. So at night, you see the geckos running up on this dome brick ceiling. And this place was like, for each of us, I think it was 240 total a night to stay in this like freaking mansion. Um, so then, you look out on, like it was cheaper than the Holiday Inn in the city was. So then there's a little bar down there, like a little bar on the beach kind of thing. And I'll point out if there's any big, like iguanas. Oh, there's a gecko right there. Probably a little night gecko, a little glass one, the clear ones. But there's also toke, like there's tegus, there's like everything you can imagine, iguanas. There's even monitor lizards here, which uh, I could be completely wrong. Uh, apparently this is all my group thought was important. Uh, I could be completely wrong, but there, uh, there's monitors here and I, they must be invasive, right? because I don't know about Mexican monitors, but you guys tell me. So, what's going on, Brandon? Why do iguanas have two of those male parts? Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna try to find out tomorrow at the Guaza uh, Iguana Preserve. So we are in, uh, in between, we are in between sun, Poncho, which is also called San Francisco formally. Um, and hold on, let me turn on a couple more lights here. There's like crazy lighting that goes all the way around. But this is where all the geckos recede into at night. That one that we just saw, let me turn this around. The one we just saw is up, up here somewhere. But these, there's no window goes here it's we're up at palm tree level power line level here and we're gonna go up even higher but the gecko is somewhere up in there and at night you just hear them doing their little cheap 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 and then wah, wah, wah. there were a whole bunch last night up here though like all around the edge and when they get nervous they'd run over the arch completely upside down on the brick it was beautiful to watch them do their thing so now we're at the top of the palm trees and 
we can get above that even more. So watch this. So then we come out here, and this gets a little sketchy, but so out here, there's more trees. Um, how do I close it? Okay. And then part that I'm going to do for you. So we go up these crazy, they're like Mayan stairs. So they're, every other block is a stair. They're like two and a half feet each. So a little bit too much to, to buy off in one step. And there's no light until you get to the top. But check out what's at the top when I get up there. All right. So, so I'm just going to go slow and steady because you guys know I got a bad back. But I'm headed up. And we're climbing. We're climbing. We're climbing. And we're climbing. And we're climbing. And we're climbing. Okay, we're at the top. Now I have to figure out if there's a light anywhere. There's got to be. Um, so from up here, you can see the flight we just climbed up. And here's a light. I mean, I know there's lights up here. I just don't know where any of the switches are. Oh, let there be light. All right. So. Oh, it doesn't want me to go to the other side. But actually peer down into the store here. All right. We live again. Sorry, guys. This might be really interrupted while I'm up here. Apparently, there's no cell service or Wi-Fi at the very peak of this crazy across the way they've got the the barbed wire and walls too but they look tiny from all the way up on there so come around where there's more wi-fi again okay here we are water not not good as far as it'll make you sick but you can rinse off with it and then use hand sanitizer or whatever because there was dust there's a lot of dust in this town because the streets are not paved right here you can see the streets but there's a street light in front of this house which is kind of unusual but yeah so that's the big fancy that's the big fancy uh place that we're staying pretty wild now you have to get a lot of your supplies about 45 minutes away and uh yeah it's just a wild house though like there's so many weird doodads and doohickeys and like just i don't know odd spaces that get taken up by both cockroaches and lizards but there's another gecko up in there so how's everybody doing, by the way? Um, you, am I still, am I coming in or am I not clear? Bunny Viper, what's going on? I can't see what's going on in the chat. Uh, if I don't move, I have way better service, so. Um, yeah, but in any case, it's a crazy place we're at. And I went to go, I went to the um, Amica River or Ameca River in Puerto Vallarta where we flew in first, the first day. And you could see from the car that there were like floating cars and like oil and tires and um just a film of disgusting stuff floating in that river every every inch of the river even outside the city by about 10 miles it was disgusting 
uh, and I see how all of the, the six or so species of endemic goodyids, I see how they, they aren't there anymore. But we are in an area now where we're, we're almost parallel to if straight across would be Cabo, San Luis. And so we're almost to an area where uh, there's some more uh, species of fish. So hopefully um, tomorrow uh, in the morning, first thing I'm getting up, I've got an all terrain, like a little ATV thing. And I'm going to go out and see what we can find. So far, it's been the rivers that we've been through are completely urban. And this is the first day that we're going to get to an area that it's still urban or suburban or farm. Uh, but there's a chance of finding wildlife beyond, uh, like there's a jaguar preserve there, for instance. But uh, we, we didn't see anything other than mullet we got some red snapper caught for dinner um locally which was cool right here in uh, uh off the coast of um, uh, san poncho and uh i asked them you know why is it called san poncho instead of san francisco because it says san francisco on the map uh if you're in an on an english map and they said, because that was named by a Spaniard and we hate them, we hate the Spaniards, so uh, F them. And uh, Poncho is the nickname for Francisco. So uh, we call it San Poncho and not San Francisco. So yeah, apparently that's why they call it San Poncho instead of San Francisco, it's real name that it was given like 150 years ago. So yeah, um, but guys, I just wanted to kind of hop on here, show you guys this crazy place we're at tonight. Um, we're with a group of some people, and, you know, they're hitting the beach tomorrow, and I'm going to go uh, probably try to uh, fiddle around trying to get some footage of some fish for y'all. Even if it's saltwater fish, at least they're scuba divers, snorkeling and scuba diving too, but snorkeling nearby. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of neat here in this place, like at night, we can actually see out into the palm trees and like there's these like pheasants and, and crazy birds that land and they there's a whole ecosystem up in these palm trees that we can actually see. And so while the iguanas are scared of the city, like the cats and dogs and things that are in this like neighborhood area along the beachfront, uh, they're elsewhere and so tomorrow I'm gonna try to go film them I've already done some research on the specific colony of the iguanas there and uh, also some of the tegu lizards and other things that are there uh, as well as plants and frogs and uh, lots of snakes um, so I don't know if I can promise freshwater fish like the blind cave tetra or something interesting like that more so just like mullet and chub and uh uh a few different kinds of like um like brim things like that eels but we'll take a look the books are real bad and so are the published papers of what the heck is even in the water in the rivers up here and nobody's coming here because of the activity with the um illegal cartel or illegal cartel that's a silly thing to say with the cartels that's been going on so it's been really difficult because they don't they don't recommend traveling um right here if you're government and so therefore uh the a the aid or funding for anybody coming to the area um is limited so they haven't done a whole lot of new studies uh so uh yeah um what's the house you're staying in called uh it's called uh casa de luna so house of the moon and it's in uh, officially, I think it's still considered Saulita, the the actual like it's like the unincorporated county. Like if we look out this this wing, 
might lose you guys again but that's the main remnant of the main road and then the main city is all the way down there like three or four miles whereas San Pancho is uh, half a mile over this point right here so we're kind of away from all the craziest stuff where, where it's all super touristy um, so yeah it should be interesting uh, nobody in my group really wants to go see the crazy wildlife or take a chance to go off-roading up into the mountains or into the hillside, but it does go from sea level all the way up to like 7,000, 8,000 feet. Um, it's really wild as far as the, the, um, geography of this place but it's also two hours ahead of the time that i left the time uh in seattle so we're in like central time and it's getting a little late not not crazy or anything but we're gonna try to be up i think it's almost 11 and we're gonna try to be up at um apparently my wife is rocking out to some sort of music downstairs down on that floor um, but yeah so hopefully hopefully I'll have some aminoles I've got some clips just some little shorts and stuff plus um, a few clips of like the horses out here and the uh, pelicans fishing and the fishermen coming in and Honestly, a lot of it is just how polluted this area is. It's so bad. Everything from 200 miles of agriculture and no laws regarding what can go on the river. It really shows you how incredibly bad it, it can end up if we don't take care of our waters. So that's kind of all I'm going to probably get out of the main rivers where like split fin goodyeds or amica splendens or the rainbow goodyeds or uh the gold skiffia um i'll have a video showing you guys my attempt uh at going to those rivers but it was so gross it smelled so bad like human waste that there was no uh attempt to, like not even the seabirds were fishing on the banks of most of it so it's really that was really just to see but now I get why they need our protection and why people keeping them in the aquarium hobby is the only way they're gonna be alive but one nice thing is they are starting to clean up all of that stuff it's just it's taking a long time and uh, it there's a lot to clean up um, so yeah uh, hopefully like they did in Michoacan, they can re-release some of the goodyids and other things. So, uh, I wanted to get up there, but that's it's too dangerous. Americans aren't shouldn't be traveling there. Um, they grabbed a group of four Americans yesterday, I believe. So we're gonna try to stick more to the sphere of influence of the tourist zone slash least one out of every five uh locals we can kind of communicate with a little bit of spanish a little bit of a little bit of french a little bit of mexican uh spanish that is uh, although i say mexican spanish because it is a little different than like spain spanish uh, and there's a lot of slang especially here but guys i uh I just wanted to check that a stream would even work and so hopefully tomorrow after I go out I will uh, be back in and yeah the ecology we're right on the line of where it goes tropical subtropical slash Mediterranean and uh, this is where all the turtles uh, where a lot of them come one of the biggest turtle beaches uh, and yeah it's just it's a pretty neat place there's still jaguars and um, there's naturally spider monkeys and howler monkeys about mm, 200 miles south but people have brought them in for the tourists and kind of let them go into some little jungle areas that are kind of isolated like there's no way to get to them I like it. they've been cut off by the sea and the big tall mountains they get cold before they come down so animals can live there but they're stuck there 
due to humans, but they used to live there 500 years ago or something, you know. So it's kind of interesting, and hopefully tomorrow that's one of the spots we'll be going to. So, uh, yeah, if you want to see the tour of this crazy five, six-story mansion thing, it's crazy. I've never stayed in anything like this. Um, but, yeah, if you have a group of people, it's only like 250 a person a night. So uh, once-in-a-lifetime kind of thing. Uh, plus, I was coming down here to figure out my the cost of that potentially, um, and some medications that um, are super expensive in the US for my lupus that are not so much here. So we'll see, my doctor's like ready to write. So, all right guys, well, I'm gonna sign off. Thank you so much for just hopping on and seeing what I'm up to, of course. Uh, and hopefully I'll come back with some more actually fishy related content and not just me saying, wow, look at this cool place I'm in. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you guys later. It's still hot here. Very hot and humid, like 100% humidity. And the full moon is tomorrow, so uh, the lizards and bugs and things should be pretty active to but And feel free to cheer me up and uh, allow me a week away from posting. I mean, I'll try to, but I don't know how good the internet is. So we'll see. We'll see, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, the chat's not loading in real time. So if I missed your question, I'm sorry. But uh, much love to you guys from San Poncho slash Sayulita, Mexico. And uh, I'll see you guys probably tomorrow uh, afternoon if, if all shapes up after I've gone out in the morning. All right. Good night, guys.